who planted good seed in his field. That night, while his hired men were asleep, his enemy sowed thistles all through the wheat and slipped away before dawn. When the first green shoots appeared and the grain began to form, the thistles showed up too. The farmhounds came to the farmer and said, Master, that was clean seed you planted, wasn't it? Where did these thistles come from? He answered, Some enemy did this. The farmhands asked, Should we weed out the thistles? He said, No, if you weed the thistles, you'll pull up the wheat too. Let them grow together until harvest time. Then I'll instruct the harvesters to pull up the thistles and tie them in bundles for the fire. Then gather the wheat and put it in the barn. Jesus dismissed the congregation and went into the house. His disciples came in and said, Explain to us that story of the thistles in the field. So he explained, The farmer who sows the pure seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The pure seeds are subjects of the kingdom. The thistles are subjects of the devil. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, the curtain of history. The harvest hands are angels. The picture of thistles pulled up and burned is a scene from the final act. The Son of Man will send his angels, weed out the thistles from his kingdom, throw them in the rubbish and be done with them. They are going to complain to high heaven, but nobody is going to listen. At the same time, ripe, holy lives will mature and adorn the kingdom of their father. Are you listening to this? Really listening? Jesus asked. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Philip. Now it's time for our talk. And I wonder if you recognise, if anybody recognises one of these. I don't even if they know, know if they still have them or not. But it's very special. It's very plain on the outside. It's just like a plastic box. But it has a secret inside. When you open it up, there's a whole world in there. And there's a little doll called Polly Pocket. And this is her house. And you would never know that that secret house was hidden inside that box, would you? Our Bible reading this morning is a bit like a Polly Pocket. It's a parable, a story Jesus told. But just like Polly Pocket, there is a secret meaning hidden inside. And you need to open up the story to find out the meaning. First of all, let's pop into our garden and have a look at what's going on there. Well, I'm here in the Vicarage vegetable patch. Now, when I planted my vegetables, this plot was clear of weeds. I took all the weeds out twice. And if you come and have a look here, you can see that I've now got weeds all over the place muddled in with my vegetables. Now, it's possible that I could pick the odd one out without upsetting those salad leaves there. But I feel just like the person, the farmer in our Bible reading, who planted his seed and then some evil person came along and planted weeds in between everything. I wonder where have they come from? Now, with my vegetables I can pull some of the weeds out safely, but some I will have to leave until I harvest the crop. Otherwise, like the farmer in the parable Philip's just read to us, I will lose some of my plants and I don't want to do that. Now, have a look at the video clip the next one is in Ed Blockley's field behind the vicarage. Well, we're now in Ed Blockley's field behind the vicarage where there's a wonderful crop coming on and it's beginning to ripen very gradually. Now this is a crop similar to the one in the parable that Jesus told. And in Bible times, they wouldn't have had uh, so many uh, seeds coming up successfully. But here you can see the crop 
is well planted. There isn't much room for any weeds to grow in between these stalks and it looks as though there's going to be a good harvest. So I'm going to ask Philip to do a close-up of the crop. Well, it's coming on. Okay. In the parable Philip read, the workers wanted to pull out the weeds, but the farmer didn't want to lose any of the crop. So instead, he decided to let both the crop and the weeds grow together until harvest time, when the weeds can be gathered up and burnt and the wheat harvested and put in the barn. That is the parable Jesus told. I wonder what the secret meaning of this parable is then? Well, here's a clue. The field is the world, and we can all see that in our world there is a lot of good, but there's also a lot of evil, bad stuff. Why doesn't God burst out of heaven and stop all the evil in the world straight away and punish the people who get away with doing cruel and terrible things? It's a good question. And the parable gives us the answer. If God did that while life is still going on, while the wheat and the weeds are still growing, some good might get lost or damaged. It is because God cares about us so much that he won't risk anything that would cause us lasting harm. There's time enough for punishment when the world comes to an end. Then all that is good and honest and kind and thoughtful will be gathered safely forever. All that is mean and selfish, cruel and greedy will be completely destroyed forever. We can trust our God to know the right time to punish and the right time to hold back because he always acts with love and mercy as well as with justice. Something you might like to do is something I did uh, in 2014 is to make a flower arrangement of weeds and other plants, real flowers. I made one just of weeds when we were celebrating the 100 years since the start of the First World War. And I used weeds that you might find in this country or in France to show that the soldiers marching into France would actually see plants just like the ones at home. Now it's time to affirm our faith, to say what we believe. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This, this is, is the faith, faith of the church. church. This, this is our faith. faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now Philip's going to lead our intercessions. Let us draw near to the just and merciful God and pour out our concerns for the church and for the world. Lord our God, as we join our prayers with all the other people around the world who are praying too as our planet turns through time and space, we thank you for your love and care for us. We thank you for your kindness and forgiveness. Help us to look with your wider vision and to follow your example of compassion. 
Lord of love. Hear our prayer. Lord our God, please be with us when we need to discuss things with one another. May we listen carefully and appreciate the opinions and needs of others. Help us to be careful in making decisions so that we may live on this earth together in harmony and peace. Lord of love, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for Tabley and the neighbourhoods in which we live. We pray for our local parish councillors in their work for our communities. And we pray for the parochial church council here at St Paul's. May all those involved negotiate well together and make wise decisions. Lord of love, hear our prayer. Lord our God, we pray for those who face difficulties in their lives and those with ongoing health problems. We pray for all who are caught up in war, deprivation and the effects of COVID-19. We ask for a just and realistic sharing of our resources and courage, support and healing for all who suffer. Lord of love, hear our prayer. Lord our God, in all the events and phases of our life, we give you thanks for your steadfast and unchanging love, which sustains and directs us. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. Our, our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn today is, O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder. Thank mm -hmm. you.
your closing prayer. Eternal God, our beginning and our end, accompany us on our life's journey. Dawn on our darkness, open our eyes to praise you for your creation and to see the work you set before us each day. Take us and use us to bring to others the new life you give in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and always. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. See you next time. Sally's going to pray for us again now. Thank mm-hmm. you.